The world didn't give it to me. The world didn't give it. The world can't take it away. Yeah. Amen. 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 I'm just surprised all these singers and trusters. <laughs> <laughs> Ain't she funny? Come to the conference and let me know they can <laughs> Beautiful. As soon as we call choir rehearsals, uh -huh. there's some faces I'm just going to look at. Well, okay, this time I have been a professional. And so maybe you enjoy it. Not Maybe we were just on drift drift. Yep. All, right. Mm. All right. Okay. But even if it's on drift drift, mm -hmm. even we need to be restored. Mm -hmm. Yes. Because if we don't handle the drift drifts and ask God to help us, they will handle you. Yes. yes. Wow. We have a beautiful young lady who's going to come with a spoken word. Mr. Gabriel Ellison Harris. She is planning to deliver her bio. She's a busy yes, lady. She is. Let me tell you about her. It doesn't matter where the sisters in touch go. We can be in Canada. Guess what you'll see? Yeah, Gabriel yeah, yeah, yeah. coming. <laughs> With her dad, she's coming. She just she came on a train this time. Oh, then she had to catch a bus. <laughs> she is going to be there. Her faithfulness. And we just thank God for her. I mean, she is such a sweetheart, yes, and is. and you know how she always she always wants to do something from the Lord that gives her joy, mm -hmm. that gives her strength. Mm -hmm. So let's uh, receive Sister Minister Gabriella Harris. Amen. borrowed from somebody else. I don't want y'all to see it because I still got it. <laughs> <laughs> the Lord will uncover your knees, won't he? <laughs> Thank you so much. I had it in my photo so nobody would see that I still got it. Whoever belongs to honest, I'll give it back to you. <laughs> Praise God, everybody. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise God, everybody. Hallelujah. That sound good, don't it? Yeah. I sure am blessed and I am continuing to be blessed and it is my prayer that you are being blessed by this beautiful conference as well. Uh, hey, sis, somebody might need to adjust. As a new minister, I, I, I know the assignment, but, but I would be remiss if I did not say I am so grateful and honored to be fellowshipping with you all today. And I adore Sister Wooten. I respect her yes. and this beautiful committee, Sister Jeanette Sampson and my cousin Jackie. And I, I'm overwhelmed. Uh, but I'm not going to tarry. I will be obedient to the Lord. And there is a word from the Lord today. Mm -hmm. Shall we pray? Yes. Our Father and our God, thank you. Thank, thank you, you for this opportunity to come together once again in the beauty of your holiness. Yes. Thank, you. thank you for allowing us to fellowship with yes. you, God. Thank you for allowing us to worship you, to praise you mm -hmm. in your mighty name, God. I ask right now by the power of your Holy Spirit that, that you cover me from the crown of my head to the soles of my feet, God. Lord, Lord, I've been praying and I've been fasting in the spirit, God, about a time such as this, God. So I ask now that, that the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in thy sight, my strength and my redeemer god decrease me now that that your people might hear a word from you clear the airways father god yes. in the name of jesus Thank send forth the preacher now this is your servant's prayer in your name i pray amen amen, amen. my 
Our text for today is found in Matthew, the 15th chapter, the 22nd verse through the 28th verse. I will be reading Matthew, the 15th chapter, starting at the 22nd verse and concluding with the 28th. The title of this text is Pressing Your Way in Faith. And behold, a woman of Canaan came out of the same coast and cried unto him, saying, Have mercy on me, O Lord, thou son of David. My daughter is grievously vexed with a devil. But he answered her not a word. And his disciples came and besought him, saying, Send her away, for she crieth after us. But he answered and said, I am not sent, but unto the lost sheep of the house of Israel. Then came she and worshipped him, saying, Lord, help me. But he answered and said, It is not meat to take the children's bread and cast it to dogs. And she said, Truth, Lord. Yet the dogs eat of the crumbs which fall from their master's table. Mm -hmm. Now this is our pivotal verse. Then Jesus answered and said unto her, O woman, great is thy faith. Mm -hmm. Be it unto thee, even thou will. And your daughter was made whole from that very hour. Mm -hmm. if, we were, <laughs> if we were asked, if there are limits to God's compassion, uh, his love, his expectations, we know instinctively that the answer is no. Right. Mm -hmm. God cannot be diminished. He cannot change. Uh, he can do all things that are in harmony with his will and his word. Mm -hmm. The kingdom of God is boundless and because <laughs> he is our creator. Mm -hmm. And the fullness of himself is our Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. And they are three in one. The Lord is our Lord, Judge, and our Jewelry. According to the context of this text, we discover that, that Jesus is preparing to depart into the coast of Tyre and Sidon. Uh, he was approached by the Canaanite woman. A woman who was speaking to the Savior who was not from her native land. She was not a part of the Lord's lost sheep of Israel. She was not their kinfolk. Uh, she did not reside in their community. Her children did not attend the same schools as the elite children. This woman was not a member of their Rotary Club. Neither was she a part of the Israelite circle of influence. They didn't share the same customs, nor did they shop at the same supermarket. Mm -hmm. According to tradition, uh, she was not a worshiper of the one and true living God. That's right. She was considered an outsider. But because of her need and what she had heard about Jesus, and when she saw him, she, she bowed down before him and made her request known to him. Although she was considered an outsider, despite her situation, her title, her rebuke, she bowed down before the Lord and worshiped him. She pressed her way in faith to the Lord. She pressed her way in faith and sought after the boundless, uh, uh, the miraculous healing power of the Lord. The text said, then she came and worshiped him saying, Lord, help me. I would like to invite you to come in and, and walk with me around the periphery of this text. At the onset of chapter 15, Jesus is, is with his disciples and he has been engaging with the Pharisees. Uh, the Pharisees have been challenging Jesus. And we understand that at that time, uh, uh, Jesus had come to serve and heal the chosen people as the promised Messiah. For that reason, uh, Jesus, uh, the Son of Man, is interceding between the law and the people. Mm -hmm. Jesus is demonstrating how the laws and, and the traditions 
are being honored over the commandments of God. Mm -hmm. At this time, uh, uh, Jesus' prioritized mission was only for the Jews. Jesus was not yet, uh, Jesus had not yet commissioned the disciples to minister to the Gentiles. Jesus was sent first to the lost sheep of Israel. During this period in Jesus' ministry, his, his mission and message was directed to his chosen people. Nevertheless, he was approached by the Canaanite woman. God's word states that the woman was not an Israelite. She was from Canaan. Even more, Matthew depicts that, that she came out of the coast of Tyre and Sidon where Jesus had went. More significantly, the scripture reads, and behold. Now, now, Pastor Stacy already told us last night that what behold signifies in the Bible. Am I right? Mm -hmm. But if it's all right with you, I just want to stretch you for one second here. If, if you look in the King James Version of the inspired word of God, behold is used 1,326 times. Mm -hmm. The word behold appears at the a 16% rate when compared to all the other words written in the Bible. Now, in the schoolhouse, we, we learned in math class in, in, in statistics about percentages. It, this struck me. Uh, uh, we, we learned that for something to be significant, Statistically significant, mm -hmm. it needs to occur at a rate of at least 30%. Mm. Are y'all following me? Mm -hmm. Even though behold has been revealed to us 1,326 mm -hmm. times in the Bible, mm -hmm. based on statistical knowledge, we can rationally conclude its appearance at the rate of 16% or the rarity of its appearance is trying to tell us something. Mm -hmm. Derived from the Greek word idio, which has the literal translation, be sure to see. Mm -hmm. Behold means to observe <laughs> with care. Mm -hmm. It means keep your eyes fixed upon, mm -hmm. pay attention to. And like I like to say, you don't want to miss this. Mm -hmm. right, yeah. The word of the Lord says, and behold, a woman of Canaanite came. At the same coast of Jesus and cried out to him, have mercy on me, O Lord, thou son of David. My daughter is grievously vexed with the devil. Does God have your attention? Mm -hmm. Behold, the Canaanite woman pressing My uh, this outsider mm -hmm. uh, who wasn't a part of the plan, who's looked down upon, who the blessing wasn't meant for. She cries out, O Lord. <laughs> Now wait a cotton picking minute. Yeah. <laughs> the Canaanite woman acknowledges the Lord is the son of David. Hold on, are y'all paying attention? She likens herself to the children of Israel, and most importantly, she she demonstrates her faith in God. <laughs> but the word of God says, but Jesus answered her not a word. Right. Let me get this straight. <laughs> I'm getting excited. The Canaanite woman came to Jesus, uh -huh. pressing. Right. She, she humbled herself. She expressed her belief in God. Mm -hmm. Apart from her being an outsider, it sounds like she should be in good standing with the Lord. Mm -hmm. But still, the disciples, y'all know the disciples, mm -hmm. the disciples said that Jesus sent her away. Yeah. Mm -hmm. In other words, uh, uh, we don't want to deal with her kind. Mm -hmm. She doesn't belong here. Mm -hmm. Oh, by the way, Jesus, she doesn't deserve your mercy. Mm -hmm. But he answered and said, I am not sent, but into the lost house of Israel. Mm -hmm. Still pressing, she came and worshiped him. Mm -hmm. Lord, help me. Help me. I, I don't know about you, but this word points to Jesus being rather unresponsive to her plea. I mean, she's really begging God. Uh, and Jesus wasn't moved. This was something that, that, that we had not really seen before from the master. Up until this time, uh, uh, for Jesus to hear a petition was for him to answer it. 
uh, 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 when he saw the sick, it was for Jesus to heal them. But but those who are in close relationship with the Lord, we know that 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 at times we we can be put to proof by Jesus. Yes. Uh, that we are always being a tested people. Mm -hmm. She cried, "Help me, Lord!" And he answered her not. I don't know about you, but I believe what my mama used to say. He may not come when I want him, but he will be there on time. He may not come when you want him, but he'll be there on time. His time. The time. Thank you, Jesus. She kept on pressing. Lord, help me. Heal my daughter. But he answered and said, it is not meat to take the children's bread and cast it to the dogs. Awesome. Oh, <laughs> Did Jesus just say what I think he said? Did Jesus call this female a dog? Now we all know the derogatory term for a female dog, right? Oh, y'all said, yeah, because if you don't know, don't talk about it now. We're in the presence of the Lord. It's, it, it, it's not me to take the children's bread and cast it to the dogs. This is a cultural reference. Uh, the Israelites, the Jews, they are the children, and the Canaanites, the Gentiles, are the dogs. I noticed something in my exegetical studies of this scripture. Uh, the word dog, hmm, the word dog is actually God spelled backwards. Yes, yes, yes. Yeah. Now, 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 I would have to do more homework. Uh -huh. uh, don't write it down. Don't say Minister Gab told you. But Jesus might be saying, if you turn your back on God, you are nothing more than a dog. Uh -huh. It is not meat to take the children's bread and cast it to the dogs. Despite all this, the Canaanite woman did not give up. Mm. Oh, I'm oppressed. Mm. And she said, truth, Lord. Right. Truth. <laughs> Yet the dogs eat of the crumbs which fall from the master's yeah. table. Yeah. Oh, my God. The text doesn't reveal the Canaanite woman took offense to Jesus uh, 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 about her identification with the dog. She actually redirects the conversation. Okay. Oh, my God. But while pressing again, she appeals to the Lord and she asserts her claim. And she demonstrates her faith, not by protesting the insult, by, by, but by pointing to the limitless power of God. Oh God, you're right. I've fallen short. For your word says we have all fallen short of your glory. But God, I'm not worthy. This thing here is past my circumstance. This thing here is bigger than me. The names that folks called me. This is about your unlimited power, your unmerited favor, and your brand new mercies. Hot dog. Lord, you fooled my card. Lord, you're driving up my street. In fact, you're knocking on my door. I can't even argue with you, Lord. I won't even dare. Yet even the dogs eat the crumbs which fall off the master's table. Both children and dogs are under the same authority. And the healing, my daughter, God, is but a tiny crumb of the grace of your power, of your love, that belongs to you, the most high king. Woman become more persistent. Yes. Oh my God. Not only did the Canaanite woman become more persistent with her petition, and remember it it wasn't for herself. Right. She was asking for her daughter. Right. I believe the word is revealing to us in this text, thank you, Jesus, an increase in her faith. Right there in the text. Yep. She knows who she is talking Touch to. You. She believes in the merciful power of the Lord. Right. She is the example of mustard seed faith. Right. Wow. I know what you're thinking. A mustard seed is small. You just said her faith increased. Isn't that big? Oh, uh, no. Nah. Her mustard seed faith is, is a sowing of a seed. It's that faith that once it's sown, it'll plant and it'll grow bigger and it'll bear fruit. And she was looking for the fruit to be a healing fruit. All right, all right. Thank you, Jesus. She was sowing a healing seed. You see, now I'm scratching my head. Who then is this Canaanite woman? Pressing her, her posture, her disposition, her attitude. Pressing all the while. Yeah. She seems rather familiar. Hmm. Maybe it's that I'm a young woman myself, or I can relate to not fancy and taking no for an answer. Maybe it's because she and I were both born of a woman and raised by a woman. 
Is it even possible that like me, she's not characterized in the Bible as being under the authority or the protection of a husband? What is it about her that's so familiar to me? You, you know, I think I figured it out. The Canaanite woman pressing along who, who defies tradition and custom, mm -hmm. who despite what folks say about her, mm -hmm. who decided that she didn't want a life of sin for her daughter, right. mm -hmm. who pressed on in faith against mm. all odds. All right, all right, this all right. Canaanite woman who worshiped my Lord yeah. with unwavering trust, yeah, even in the face of an unanswered cry. All right, all right, all right. Ah, she's reminded me of some other women I know. Mm. Can anyone relate to the Canaanite woman? Yes. My God. Oh, women who 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 are struggling to find a job. Mm -hmm. Women who toil day in and day out on the workforce. Mm -hmm. We who organize and clean the house bring feminine energy into a masculine dominated world. Mm -hmm. Always nurturing, loving, mm -hmm. empathizing. Tolerating? Yeah. I'm talking about us women who have faced tragedy in our life, yeah. who might know something or another about hurt, abuse, molestation. Women who know something about cancer that might have rung that bell, but every once in a while have to go in for a check. That chemo radiation taker, those therapy buddies, women who caught the diagnosis early and early enough to survive, but they still lost the breast. Mm. Women, women who cry day in and day out yeah. because you were unable to conceive a baby. My God. Women who wish they would have kept that baby. Women who didn't have a choice to keep that baby. Women that might have lost yeah. the man that yeah. she loved. Yeah. Yeah. Women that served and submitted to her husband. Mm. Women who, 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 who loved. Women who, whose spirits were once crushed by a man. Yeah. The orphaned woman. Mommy and daddy aren't there anymore. Big mom has gone home to visit the Lord. Women who are losing their children to unforeseen tragedies, car accidents, gun violence, drug abuse, suicide. Can anyone relate to the Canaanite women? Women who are connected to the spirituality of our families, the community linked to our relationships with the Lord. Women who are the shaper, the rock, the stability, the teacher, the cook, the doctor, the counselor, the guider, the lover, the fighter. How do you do it, sis? It still looks so sharp. How do you do it, sis? You keep your hands out high. No, the Canaanite woman, she reminds me of some of my sisters here today. Your selflessness, your provision, your vision, your standards. You keep pressing on in faith. Mm -hmm. Busting down doors, breaking barriers and chains, lifting generational curses, yes, yes. witnessing about breakthroughs, and claiming your blessings yes. and inheritance through Jesus Christ. Yes. The Canaanite woman could have easily been me or you. Mm -hmm. But aren't you glad mm -hmm. that in Christ Jesus, your past does not define all your right, future? Right. Yes. And just like the Canaanite woman, each of us are worthy of Jesus' beneficence. Even though he makes us worthy, the God we serve still holds us accountable. He pulls us up short and sharp. We ought to learn from the Canaanite woman, Canaanite woman that in the sight of God, we are but nothing. But ain't God all right? Because if we don't know, he teaches us humility and he will strengthen us through faith. Instead of getting mad at God, Instead of getting mad at God, instead of breaking up with the church, uh, instead of breaking up with Jesus, we should humble ourselves yes. and eat the crumbs that fall from our master's table. Yes. 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 Jesus is the master. 
the bread of life. Oh, taste and see that the Lord is good. Just like the Canaanite woman, even when the mission was not meant for you or me, even against all statistical odds and barriers, Jesus still saves. Ain't God all right? Jesus still saved. He's saving women each and every day. His word said it is women, we are made by God. Beautiful in appearance, skillful, tender, refined, delicate, and love. This is God's word. It declares that we are worthy, not worthless, discerning, and wise. Proverbs teaches us that we are gracious, precious, should receive honor, and trustworthy. It goes on to tell us that, that, that women are willing workers, prudent, strong, diligent, generous, teachers of kindness, excellent, great in thy faith, worshipful, uncondemned by God. Worthy of remembrance. Mm. I pray that Jesus keeps remembering me. I pray that Jesus keeps remembering you like he remembered the Canaanite woman. Instead of giving way to despair, the Canaanite woman looked away from her trouble. She went to Jesus. She considered fully his hand of might and his ear of love. She pursed <laughs> she persevered. She pushed through her plea in faith. The blessing was not meant for her, but she sought after Jesus anyhow. Yes. Yes. It's something about that Canaanite woman who knew his name, who knew what name to call on in times of trouble, yes. who understood that Jesus is the way maker, the shock caller, the greatest good in all earth and heaven. It's something about that Canaanite woman that we all should behold. She called upon the Lord. Although he could hear her cry, he did not answer. You know what that says about the Canaanite woman? She also knew how to wait. Yes. Mm -hmm. For the word of the Lord says faith without works Work is, is dead. dead. So she pressed. And God, she pressed. And she needed to see Jesus. And she needed a word from the Lord. I don't know about you. I only know about myself. But I need a word from the Lord yes. today. Our Father, who art in heaven, yes. hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done. Thank you, Jesus, on earth as it is in heaven. Oh, Lord, hear my cry, the cry of a wretch like me. You see, I'm undeserving. I'm counted out. I'm the downtrodden, the, the persecuted. But you don't got to like me. You don't even got to respect Jesus, me. Jesus, you can Jesus. curse me. You can cut me down and call me out my name. But at the name of Jesus, ah, every knee Jesus. has got to bow. Yeah, every yeah, tongue has got to confess yeah, yeah. that Jesus Christ is Lord. Yeah. The Canaanite woman knew Jesus. Uh, maybe she uh, even uh, uh even a little better than the lost sheep of Israel. Yeah. But but the Canaanite woman knew Jesus. She called him by his name. Yeah. Oh Lord, son of David, I worship you, God. I adore you, God. Hear my plea. Save my daughter. And while she was pressing forward in faith, she demonstrated a mother's love. Yes. Oh my God. Does anybody know about a mother's love? Yeah. For in the womb you formed your baby. You carried your baby about nine months, nurtured and loved your baby. <laughs> that was their garments. You brought your baby into this world and you would lay down your life for your child. I'm so blessed that I have a mother. Mm. I'm so blessed that I have a mother. Yeah. But wait just a minute. I have a father too. All right, all My right. father is rich with houses and land. Yeah, yeah. He holdeth the world in the palm of his hand. He leads me, he guides me, <laughs> and tells me I am his own. He knew me before I was formed in my mother's womb. Somebody ought to talk to me. While she carried me for about nine months, my father clothed my mother and me in nurture and love. Thank you, Jesus. He blessed me and breathed life when he brought me into this world that he created. I'm talking about God the Father. Yes, yes. My God, who sent his son Jesus to lay down his life. Now, I know... <laughs> 
I know mama would, but but I'm so glad that she doesn't have to. I'm so glad that she doesn't have to lay down her life because Jesus already did. Mary's baby, the Rose of Sharon, the morning and evening star, Yahshua HaMashiach, the most gracious and heavenly father. Thank you, Jesus, for laying down your life for me, for saving my soul and giving me the victory in heaven. And because of you, I have faith that no matter what comes and goes. Just like the Canaanite woman, I can press forward in faith. I trust in your word, God. I lean on it, God. The kingdom of God has no boundaries. In there, in you there is deliverance. There is healing. There is abundance of love. You are all powerful. You are all knowing and everywhere present. In your time of need, in your time of need, in your in your time of despair, don't give up, don't give in, but be like the Canaanite woman and press, press forward and seek God, press, press on in your faith, press, press forth to the heart of the high calling, which is Jesus Christ. God bless you. Thank you, 
just did her trial sermon in, October, in September. This is her second time before doing her public. Hallelujah. Because I told her, I believe God was going to bless her. And she will have a word for us. But I just praise God that he used her.
I have nothing more to say. As a matter of fact, I can't say nothing. But amen. 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 Amen.